2022 has been a challenging year for most of the world, and there's no real consensus on what 2023 will bring. Well, joining us to share his forecast is Ahmed Shams, head of research at EFG Hermes. Thank you so much for being with us today. Now, economies around the world are facing challenges. We have inflation, high interest rates, soaring energy prices, and of course, geopolitical uncertainty all in the mix. What is your assessment of the global economic outlook for the year ahead? Well, thanks a lot for having me in your program. I think uh, 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 talking about the global economic outlook, the, the, there are three factors that shape up uh, the outlook for 2023. The first is uh, inflation data in the first quarter of the year. Inflation data in the first quarter would actually tell us how quickly inflation and aggregate demand have responded to uh, the monetary tightening uh, uh, cycle that the Fed has endorsed in the economy. And related to that, how timely the Fed would actually uh, be willing to end the tightening cycle, given the usual lag between uh, monetary policy and aggregate demand and the real economy uh, on the ground. Uh, the second factor is China. China is a, a, a very swing factor in the global economy recently. I think uh, 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 the second factor would be mostly related to how effective the Chinese authorities would uh, be able to stimulate the economy following a very painful uh, zero COVID policy without fueling more bubbles and more speculations in the economy, especially in the housing market, which is already in a very bad shape. And the third factor is Europe. Uh, how resilient is Europe in terms of the adaptation to the new normal uh, in the energy sector? All these three factors are interrelated and will, to a great extent, shape the global economic outlook. I think most market participants are talking about recession in 2023. Uh, the odds of recession is actually rising. We tend to agree with that. But it's important to note what kind of recessions we're talking about. We're talking about a mild recession or a soft landing uh, in terms of uh, 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 some sort of demand destruction uh, that would actually bring uh, inflation down and moderate the aggregate demand in the economy. And this will be very positive for the rest of the world. Actually, uh, the U.S. has been exporting inflation. And ironically, uh, China and other emerging markets have been exporting deflation and the world needs to balance somewhere in the middle. Uh, the, the, the U.S. economy is overheated. This is very much evidenced by the, the, the job market. Withdrawal has surged historical levels. I think um, any mild recession or uh, uh, a downward movement in aggregate demand will not lead to a significant falling out, but would moderate prices and will actually help the Fed uh, uh, reverse the policy, the dollars to stabilize, and this will be very positive for the rest of, of emerging markets. So inflation, China coming back online, Europe's resilience, all factors which are very much still up in the air. Let's talk about the MENA region. What are the standout opportunities and challenges on the horizon where economic growth is concerned over here? MENA region, uh, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not homogenous across the board. I think uh, the GCC uh, 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 oil exporters have benefit, benefited uh, so much from higher oil prices. And I think this will continue because if you look at the physical oil market, it's very tight and it will continue to be tight. The spare capacity is very low uh, globally and the non opec supply is not expected to, to, to increase much. So I think uh, oil markets will be being very tight and this will support oil prices. Uh, I know that Brent has corrected uh, recently and everybody's talking about uh, Brent being you know down uh, 15% from, from last month average and so, but this is this is a, a tactical correction, a financial correction related to uh, financial positions and occlusion of, of some hedging positions. If you look at the physical market, this will be very tight and the GCC will continue to benefit from that. Outside the GCC, we have reform programs uh, uh, in other uh, countries who actually on the con on contrary, they suffered uh, uh, external uh, uh, pressures and external shocks from from uh, surging inflation like Egypt. Egypt recently signed uh, another deal with the IMF. This is the second leg of reform and uh, this should actually be uh, very uh, supportive in terms of uh, uh, capital inflows and rebalancing the balance of payment towards a sustainable growth if the reform was uh, uh, proved to be successful. 
And as the world faces another year of uncertainty on multiple fronts, what does 2023 hold for capital markets? I mean, what are the drivers of growth and who will be the winners? Who will be the losers? Yeah, this is a this is a very good question, but it's a very difficult one. I think uh, uh, capital markets in general in 2023 uh, are going to be very volatile. Uh, uh, bond markets, the bond yields in general would tend lower uh, if, if inflation in the U.S. moderated and the dollar weakened a bit. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the equity markets will be off the hook. Uh, I think it will be a year of two halves. The first half will be uh, uh, just about volatility because everybody is trying to land on a, uh, a specific model and seeking clarity as to uh, where the dollar will land and how emerging markets will uh, be able to refinance their external debt. This, these are very uh, critical points. Refinancing and access to credit market has been very difficult for emerging markets given the surge in interest rates. And if this actually started to uh, 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 recover a bit, I think it will be very uh, uh, positive in the second half of the year. In that case, we will look forward to the second half of the year. Thanks so much for joining us. Ahmed Shams, Head of Research at EFG Hermes. Thank you so much.